Pinty Society, welcome back to the Antisocial Planet. Today we have some more new jeans with ASAP, and this is the last song on this album EP release, which is exciting because it means I get to go back and listen to this as many times as I want because I like to listen in albums as opposed to singles here and there. That's just how my brain likes to work. So it's always fun when I get to the end of an album because it means I get to save it and go back and re-listen to it as many times as I want. But yeah, this is the, the last one before Japanese releases, which I don't... I've been procrastinating on those. I know people have asked about them. Japanese songs are just in a vice grip when it comes to copyright and I just I don't know how much I want to deal with it. But I'm excited to get into the song, see what we have. We of course have a music video as well, but I'm going to be checking out the song on its own first and then we will get to the music video because they always have stuff going on with that. So let's get into the song first. I think that this will be interesting because the kind of story arc of this album has been intriguing me with kind of the demystifying of romance, even throughout their whole discography. So I'm interested to see what ASAP might be. Ooh. Hi, 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 it's me again, I'm back. Let's talk ASAP. They have the time. Let's talk ASAP, baby. Hurry up, don't be lazy. ASAP, baby. Hurry up, don't say maybe. Ooh, okay, what? I love the clock, especially with ASAP, right? The idea of getting back to me as soon as possible. Do you have the time being one of the opening lines? I love the delivery with these synths coming in. Very staccato in their delivery. There's obviously a little bit of post on their voices too to just add to the kind of that digital feeling. So they're delivering it in a very staccato cutoff way, but then they're just adding in like a little bit of post on their voices to just like really lean into that almost like robotic feeling and then have having the synths also being very staccato with lots of space in between them, even like empty space where the main production is cut off and having the synths come in at like very specific beats in the cadence of how they're delivering the lines to like really accent those. Interesting. Back. Let's talk ASAP. They have the time. Let's talk ASAP, baby. Hurry up, don't be lazy. ASAP, baby. Hurry up, don't say maybe. Hey, guitar, hand to the go back and sing the love. Can't go any singing, I saw that's the only There's this one more thing I'll show you. Come with me, so much to do and love to see. Just for a minute. That's cute! Ooh, okay, ooh, I like that we're getting two voices at the same time. I also really like that they have a very breathy delivery in a lot of this too, because we have a lot of staccato elements that are very hard cutoffs at certain points with like the synths and stuff, these moments of silence, space in between different elements, even in just terms of them spelling out ASAP. Instead of saying that is a word, they're spelling out the actual individual letters, so there's something very cut off in that. And then having their breathy delivery softening out some of those edges, it's a nice contrast. I think it also adds to the fact that there's almost this little bit embarrassment of calling back, right? Like saying, hey, I thought I said everything, and then I hung up and immediately remembered that I had something else to say and I had to call you back right I'm like, sorry, there's this little bit of embarrassment that they're like asking for more time, just a minute and requesting just a little bit, just for a second. Can I, if you could just get back to me, I just have a little something I want to say, right? Having that breathier delivery, I think just softens their voices a bit more. It has more of a like youthful, shy feeling to it, which I think is like a nice callback to Super Shy, right? <laughs> it's like the beginning of this album. So you have this full circle, but a more pulled back feeling to it, right? Super Shy is very like energetic and very like upbeat. It's obviously one of the lead songs. They're going to be doing, performing it a lot, doing a lot of promotion for it. So it's going to be a little bit more in the pop realm than some of the B sides of it. But this one feels more of that embarrassment, but even embarrassment in more of a private moment of leaving a message for someone, right? We have this imagery of making a phone call and hanging up and then being like, hey, I have something else to say. If you can get back to me when you get this message, whatever happens. So that seems less of a public embarrassment and more of a, I feel shy, even 
even if it's just like, the two of us talking, even if I'm just like on the phone leaving you a message and no one else is going to hear it, even with that, there's a shyness coming through with it. Interesting though to have a drawback because I was talking about before how this album has had a lot of demystifying romance and whether or not you should centralize a romantic relationship in your life, which I feel like is something that their, their whole discography kind of references to all the way back to Hype Boy, right? So it's interesting to have this almost like drawback of almost like going back and being like, even though you shouldn't centralize romance in your life, it doesn't mean that you can't have a romantic relationship or that you can't think about romantic relationships, you can't want it, right? I think that's very complex to both take away some of the power that I think media gives being in a romantic relationship, especially from what I understand of Korean culture. It is like a much bigger thing in South Korea than it is for me in the West. So it's one thing to deconstruct that and understand that your importance or your value or validating yourself through having a romantic relationship because of the way that media and music depicts that is not something that you should be doing. It's not something that you should be centralizing in your life, but also wanting that. If you aren't a romantic, then chances are you are going to want a romantic relationship of some kind in your life, whether or not it is serious relationships or just wanting to experience what that's like, right? Like all the members here are very young. They may just want to know even basic <laughs> what a romantic relationship is like. They probably aren't looking for something that is long term or anything like that, but fantasizing about it, having crushes having feelings for someone, going on dates, anything like that isn't anything super serious, but you still want to experience that and have that be part of your life whilst understanding how do you separate how media depicts that from who you are as a person and your own individuality and your own worth and stuff like that. So did I ramble there and have any coherent thought? I don't know. I don't know. I love the little TikToks in the back. That's really cute. I love that the two sides of the mixing. Ooh, fun! With the production coming in. What I like that they brought in the other synth elements. I love having the layered voices. I just think it's really cool. I think it adds to some blending again with the group. There's like lots of staccato things. So having the two voices together, I think just adds some connection in the song in a way that it needs in that contrast. I love all of the synths coming in because they feel almost like this mixture of the alarms that you get on like a phone or like ringtones, like the default ringtones that you can get on a phone. It also has almost this feeling of the kind of music that plays when you're like on hold, which I think is interesting as well. Like the like elevator music feeling of whatever generic copyright free music plays while you're stuck on hold while making calls. Maybe I'm dating myself in that I'm an adult and most of my phone calls are because I have to call some kind of customer service. Otherwise, I'm avoiding phone calls at all costs. It adds to that like feeling of waiting. It has like the clock feeling to it too, like this ticking feeling to the production, adding in like the elements of the like defaults on the phone in terms of like alarms or ringing phone calls because we're like waiting for this call, this response back. All just really cool to add into the narrative of just the production of the song. And it's really cute. I like all the little ad libs that are happening. I like just this very like synthy, but there's lots of like, empty space feeling to the production. And even just the some of the repetition of the lines, I think is really interesting too, because it's you're just waiting and you're repeating like what you want to say and watching the clock and listening to it tick by like this idea of being stuck in a moment of waiting is really cute. But I like this also of instead of don't be lazy, we have hurry up, don't say. Interesting to shift it. And then the just for a minute, like smoothing everything out again. Really nice. <laughs> Just for a minute. Just for a minute. 
Ooh, that like filter. Is that it? I think that's it for it, because it's a shorter song. Interesting! To end off that don't say and not finish that sentence and then have just for a minute, like going back to that idea of, can I just have a minute of your time? <laughs> Interesting song, especially to end off the album. Very different from the other songs that I've heard from them. I think that it goes back to some of the elements of Super Shy in a very different lens. I think that it's interesting to have a bit of a full circle moment to the album of, again, this feeling of demystifying romance and the way that it is depicted or the way that we feel like we should centralize those relationships over others. I've talked a lot about how I feel like New Jeans discard also deals a lot with pulling forward platonic relationships and, and how important those are like building up friendships is also something that is very vital and important and something that I feel like a lot of music doesn't focus on like when it comes to songs about love and connecting with people a lot of the time those songs are romantic love centric as opposed to friendship centric and I think that New Jeans does a really good job of pulling that forward and highlighting the importance of connection with other people especially in their music videos the friendship that they depict between each other in their music videos I think is really important so interesting to have that kind of battling within them of yes friendships are important yes it's important to build like real world relationships as opposed to parasocial relationships they've also touched on that a lot too but at the same time there's this feeling of even with the ditto music videos a lot of that was how do you demystify parasocial relationships how do you understand and deconstruct how we build parasocial relationships and when does it become unhealthy when does it become too reliant on that parasocial relationship but even at the end of those mvs having the fan come back to them and still have that nostalgia or that comfort for this group it's okay to like groups <laughs> like musicians to like specific pieces of media and to build a healthy parasocial relationship and to have that comfort and connection with those pieces of media it's only when it shifts into too much reliance on those pieces of media that it becomes unhealthy and it becomes something that needs to be like pulled back especially if like, the line between this is like a persona i have agreed to being an audience member of a performance when it shifts into ideas of reality right we have to understand that the image of new jeans that we have as fans is a performance is a persona is a curated image of what they are willing to share with us and that is fine they are allowed to have their private lives and they definitely should we don't actually know that we don't actually have a relationship with them there are lots of things about them that we are not privy to and that is totally fine we should not have that information and there should be a clear boundary between us and the performers but when that boundary starts to blur and you stop being able to see that you don't actually have a connection with them, that's when things become an issue, right? But that doesn't mean that you can't come back to that media and you can't continue to find comfort in it. So again, this kind of like circular moment, and it feels a little bit like that here of, yes, we're demystifying romantic relationships, decentralizing them from our lives and deconstructing how media depicts them and whether or not they should be as important as they are, whilst also understanding that romantic relationships aren't inherently bad and there is a healthy way to have romantic relationships or to even just enjoy crushes, enjoy getting to know someone and being very, I don't know, surface level flirty or whatever. There's nothing wrong with that inherently. So I think that it's interesting to have these kind of circular moments in their discography and the way that they deconstruct these ideas. I think it adds a complexity to it because there isn't a finite solution to the different things that they're deconstructing. It's just that there's a healthy way to do it and there's an unhealthy way to do it. And and where that boundary, that line lays for you is something that you have to figure out, right? Like how, how invested can you get into a parasocial relationship is something that you have to put up a boundary for, right? Some people, that's a difficult thing. For other people, it's fairly easy, right? That depends on you. Same with romantic relationships. What is a healthy romantic relationship for you? I can't tell you that. You have to figure that out on your own. And there's no way of just saying, hey, generally, this is what it looks like because everyone has what they're looking for in a relationship, what they've been through in past relationships, what they've been through just in terms of like their life and they're gonna have to deal with it in different ways. Interesting. I, I wanna see the music video and see what they end up doing with this particular song. What story we pull from that. It looks like we have maybe some drawings. We've had drawings depicted in other music videos. Bunnies? Fans? Hi, it's me again, I'm back. Let's talk ASAP. They have Ooh, they're all blonde. Let's talk ASAP, baby. Hurry up, don't be lazy. Hey, now the dark hair. Maybe, baby. Hurry up, don't say maybe. 
Ooh, okay, no, like there's a lot happening. Okay, we have like multiple bunnies and like almost again maybe pulling into again parasocial relationships, right? Of because bunnies, their fan base, obviously, we have them lurking a little bit. <laughs> it is it definitely isn't that they're doing something specific as new jeans, and that's why bunnies are there. I think it's interesting to have the differences of them all with light colored hair and them all with dark colored hair. Because clearly the darker color is closer to natural. I know that if it's black, it's probably still dyed, but obviously a lot closer to your natural hair color than the blonde. So maybe like a contrast there of artificial curated aesthetic versus more like natural aesthetic. Ooh, the eyes is a little bit terrifying. Ooh, the shadow too. Ooh, the like glow in her eyes. Okay, interesting like contrast, like it's happening a lot in like night too, which I think is interesting with the like night vision. So it's not the normal time when you would depict a music video. Like a music video is usually in daylight, lit, it's these forested areas or these like inside areas. I also was thinking with when they have all the light color, it's like the same styling and it's almost like they're supposed to be almost like clones of each other. Like they're supposed to all look very much like each other as opposed to when they have the darker hair color where there's more individuality coming through. Again, that might be like a curated image versus a more natural image. It may also, when there was a couple of scenes where they have the darker hair color and they had the binocular and the spyglass, I think that's interesting because we have almost bunnies watching them and then we have this, when they have the light color and then we have this flip of them maybe watching back. Again, parasocial relationships where we talk about how, yes, we tend to focus in parasocial relationships of the fans, relationships with the idols or the musicians, but New Jeans has also touched on like how they feel about interacting with fans too and like the parasocial relationship that goes like both ways of how an um, uh, um, idol or a musician also has certain things that they rely on like fans for right like the support the almost like added layer of validation for the things that they're making you know the outpouring of like love and support that comes from having a fan base and wanting to connect with them and knowing that the things that you're making are bringing them comfort and happiness right there is a back and forth between that relationship so maybe some of that's coming into it too Oh! The editing is trippy though with all the like overlays and stuff. Like it's a bit jarring to my brain. We have the water imagery too. ASAP, baby. Hurry up, don't be lazy. Hmm. ASAP, baby. Hurry up. We have like the elven ears, too. ASAP, baby. Hurry up, don't say. Hurry up, don't say. Okay, we have the clawed hand too. We have like cute paws for bunnies, but then we also have like the claw. We have the shadow as well. We have the elven ears. I was gonna say that there's some elven feeling to the way that they're styling or the certain scenes that we have, but it seems to be like a little more over that we have the little pointed ears there. So maybe almost making them into something like because they're supernatural, which is literally a song that they have for their Japanese releases, which I haven't listened to yet, but there may be a connection there in terms of storytelling. But making them into something ethereal and more than human, right? In the way that we perceive idols and musicians not only having a curated image to show fans but also fans perceiving them as something above them or other than them i think that where parasocial relationships become the most toxic and difficult to deal with is when people stop seeing idols as also people right when they separate them from that humanness and that humanity where it can be both in terms of admiration where it goes too far people see them as these perfect curated beings when in fact they aren't they are still human and they still have layers and layers of complexity and again we we don't actually see all of who they are which is the way that it should be and because of that we don't get to see all of the flaws and we don't get to see all of the moments of struggle and we don't see every layer of who they are and because of that we only see what they 
want us to see. And if you see that as like that curated image as reality, you can end up like admiring them too much, right? Like we use the word idol to describe them. So that has its own like complexities into it. So like it could bring in some of that as well. I don't know if I had a coherent thought there. I feel like I'm rambling a lot in this video and I'm just like, I hope when I'm editing this that I'm like, yeah, there was a full thought there. Interesting with the mirrors too. We have water, mirrors, reflection. We have some more light in certain images too. Interesting at the book too. We've had some like fairy tale imagery in some of their depictions too. Interesting. Right? Like we've had some which music video was it where they had the depictions of the different stories? Was it OMG? Maybe it was farther back. There's definitely a music video <laughs> where they have some fairy tale imagery mixed into it, which I talked about. Fairy tales are at least there's a curated version of that, right? The ones that you probably grew up with, the versions of the fairy tales that and then there's the grim fairy tales version, which are very different. So the contrast of those, I think it's really interesting that they have these jarring images of like scary imagery in this, right? Like the eyes watching, the hand the almost like clawed hand we have the shadow reaching out for them right there's all of this almost like horror elements mixed in with these elven magical fairy tale kind of images as well i think it's interesting to have some of the more generic like k-pop music video moments like we had them like dancing choreo in the almost like school uniform thing very normal thing that you see all the time in k-pop music videos but at nighttime in the dark with this almost like night vision filter on it. So that has an eeriness to it, uh, an unsettlingness, because that's not the context that we're used to seeing those scenes. And it was at like a different angle. So it almost felt like a POV of someone like watching them, right? So there's all of these like jarring images of something that put into an average K-pop music video, totally fine, would not be perceived as unnerving. But in this one, there's just like something about the context of those scenes, whether it's the darkness or the uh, like fog that was coming through the low light, the POV of the shot, this like shaky cam feeling like there's certain things within the way that the scene is framed that changes the meaning of it and that in of itself it has like this eerie underlying feeling to it which is interesting they always get me with the music video i feel like the music videos every time i watch one i have to like write a whole essay to fully get all my thoughts out <laughs> which even if even though i make really long videos i feel like it's not enough i should i can't take that amount of time right i can't do a full-length feature film video every time i want to try and explain all of the thoughts that i have about a new jeans music video <laughs> as much as i would probably enjoy that i just i, I can't put that I, I don't have that kind of time and patience to do that. Really interesting concept, as always. I feel like I went into a lot of what I thought about the song, but I feel like with I was seeing the POV of the song as being New Jeans, but with the music video, I feel like maybe it's almost the voice of fans or bunnies wanting just a minute, saying, yes, I know that we we just saw each other and I just talked to you and I just thought I said all the things that I wanted to, but now I just, I want one more minute, right? And I think that could be very reflective of what it is like to be an idol or a musician or someone who is in the public eye interacting with fans on a regular basis because yes you can have just released something you can have just done something official schedule as a performer and people can be asking you the next minute to do something more right and i think that we can see that anytime that groups take a break or they stop releasing things at the same schedule or they've decided to postpone something right i think that we've we always see fans who are like i want the next thing and i know that right now at the time of me recording this new jeans is like taking a break from stuff and i know that there's a bunch of complexities around that i understand that there's a lot going on with new jeans right now i'm not going to critique on them taking a break or what might be involved in that because there's too much complexity for me to get into but i know that people are already to like talking about like when's the next thing going to be released wanting to know as soon as one comeback is done wanting the next thing and that's not just new jeans that's every group three months will go by and people are like it has been an eternity since the last comeback so there's constantly this need for releasing new stuff and part of that is just trying to keep up with social media and the way that the music industry works right now the attention span of the music industry is extremely short and i think it's even more so 
in K-pop, just the way that the K-pop industry works is a lot more of this short time frame of being able to grab attention and keep it because there's like a way faster turnaround with music. So I think that it might be pulling on some of that relationship of even though we've just made something, people are like requesting more of us, wanting just one more minute, just one more moment to get back as soon as possible, right? And I think that plays into some of the MV of having this like POV almost of a fan watching them while they're doing other things and having these night shots where it's even at night they're still performing they're still on they are still being new jeans and still trying to give more of themselves even though at a certain point they have to pull back and have their own thing there's even shots of them sleeping right some of that might be going into some of the fairy tale imagery but it can i think it can also talk about that boundary of even when they're sleeping it feels like they're being watched which i think is definitely part of it even when they're not doing stuff officially people are still listening to their music they're still watching the music videos they're still looking at their social media uh, posts. They're still constantly talking about them, thinking about them, interacting with the stuff that they've made. So they're always performing. They're always on, even if they aren't officially in front of a camera doing a schedule or something. There is a certain 24-7 performance to the way that they live their life because they are new jeans, which I just think that's like a fascinating concept. And I definitely feel like I could be pulling apart more things. Like I said, I feel like I could write a whole essay every time that I watch one of their music videos because there's so many different layers to the way that they like pull apart different concepts. I love that they have ideas about a certain central concept that they want to do and then they just like, keep pulling back layer after layer after layer to find just like more and more of what they can analyze and pull apart with it both like visually and sonically and i just think that that's such an interesting concept in general let alone for such a, a young group like i even going back to listening to like their debut stuff i'm like this is such a complex thing to be doing for your debut like you have not you haven't built up your group yet and you're already dealing with these complexities and i think that's just such an interesting thing to do especially for such a small group especially for a group that is definitely publicized towards a younger audience even though it isn't limited to that younger audience i just like that there is such richness in the storytelling of how how they release their music and and their music videos i definitely thought when they had like a music video for basically all of their songs i'm like what could they possibly be doing everything they're doing all of the things in their music videos i definitely thought that it would be more of like a performance thing more of a hey let's just have a video for the sake of like promotional stuff but no that it's like there's stuff going on in every single one of them and i think that's just so interesting but yeah i, I definitely am gonna have way more thoughts every time i go and edit these videos i'm like i find more things and i have more thoughts about what's going on so i hope you enjoyed listening to that along with me you can click this place to go and see my previous actions or you can subscribe to so miss next time i post a new jeans reaction i will see you in the next video bye